One minute ago, sirens began wailing across the Puyallup River Valley. Emergency dispatchers in Pierce County are now receiving hundreds of calls per minute. Acoustic sensors buried deep in the mountain's flanks have detected something moving. What is racing toward 80,000 sleeping residents at the speed of a freight train? Why do scientists say there may be no way out? And what ancient force, silent for five centuries, has just awakened beneath the ice? Consider a scenario that emergency planners have modeled countless times. The first calls flood into South Sound 911 just after midnight. Residents in Ording report a low rumble, like distant thunder that will not stop. Within minutes, the tremor spreads through Puyallup, then Sumner, then Fife. Children wake crying, dogs refuse to settle. The ground itself seems to breathe. In this scenario, emergency management computers light up with a cascade of alerts. The Mount Rainier Lahar Detection System, a network of underground acoustic flow monitors maintained by the USGS, triggers its first genuine activation in operational history. Something massive is descending from the mountain's western flank. But this would be only the first warning. Within the hour, geological rapid response teams from the Cascades Volcano Observatory would be airborne. Their mission would be simple but terrifying. Map the source, determine the scale, calculate how much time remains. In such an event, what they might find could defy their models entirely. Based on documented patterns of volcanic unrest, the seismic signature might not match a typical debris flow. The acoustic profile could prove too broad, too sustained. Satellite thermal imaging would likely reveal a heat bloom spreading across the Sunset Amphitheater, the most unstable formation on Mount Rainier's upper west slope. Ground-penetrating radar could show fractures propagating through rock that geologists have flagged for decades as dangerously weakened. The trajectory of such a failure would point directly toward the Puyallup River Valley, home to schools, hospitals, and tens of thousands of families who would only have minutes to react. What the science tells us is already alarming. Deep beneath the summit, acidic groundwater has been eating away at Mount Rainier for millennia. Hot, sulfur-rich gases rising from the magma chamber dissolve into this water, creating a corrosive bath that transforms solid volcanic rock into soft, waterlogged clay. Geologists call this process hydrothermal alteration. It has hollowed out entire sections of the mountain from within. The Sunset Amphitheater, a massive bowl-shaped depression on the volcano's western face, contains the largest concentration of this weakened material anywhere on the edifice. USGS three-dimensional slope stability models have calculated that over 260 million cubic meters of rock in this zone could fail without warning. That volume is equivalent to the electron mud flow that buried the Puyallup Valley five centuries ago. The fractures, according to ongoing monitoring, continue to evolve. The signals that scientists watch for are well documented and understood. The Pacific Northwest Seismic Network monitors shallow earthquakes clustering between 2 and 6 kilometers below the summit. Infrasound detectors pick up pressure waves rippling outward from the western glaciers. GPS stations measure ground deformation that can accelerate by centimeters over weeks or months. When Mount Rainier enters what volcanologists call an elevated state of unrest, it displays a combination of these signatures. The historical record shows that previous collapses on the mountain shed massive pieces of the western flank, burying entire areas under tens of meters of debris. The electron event, notably, occurred without any preceding eruption that scientists have been able to identify. The danger is not merely theoretical. What makes Mount Rainier uniquely deadly is not fire, but ice. The volcano carries more frozen water than all other Cascade volcanoes combined, more than 25 glaciers strape its flanks, holding approximately one cubic mile of ice and snow. When this ice mixes with collapsing rock and volcanic heat, it creates something far more destructive than lava. It creates a lahar. A lahar is a rapidly moving slurry of water, mud, rock, and debris that flows with the consistency of wet concrete but moves at the speed of a river and flood. 
past lahars from Mount Rainier have traveled as fast as 80 km per hour near the summit and remained lethal at 30 km per hour even in the lowlands. They have reached depths of 150 meters in confined valleys, stripping forests, bridges, and entire towns from the landscape. The Osceola mudflow, which occurred approximately 5,600 years ago, remains Mount Rainier's signature catastrophe. During a period of explosive eruptions, roughly 3.8 cubic kilometers of the volcano's summit and northeastern slope collapsed. The resulting lahar swept down the White River Valley, filled canyons to depths exceeding 100 meters, and spread across 550 square kilometers of the Puget Sound lowland. The flow reached what is now Tacoma. It reached what is now Kent. It extended into Puget Sound itself, burying the prehistoric shoreline beneath meters of volcanic debris. Indigenous communities that had lived in the region for thousands of years vanished beneath the mud. Their encampments near modern-day Enumclaw were discovered buried under 23 meters of sediment. The mountain had erased an entire landscape in a matter of hours. But the Osceola was not the last large lahar. Approximately 500 years ago, a portion of the Sunset Amphitheater collapsed without any confirmed volcanic eruption. The resulting electron mudflow swept down the Puyallup River Valley, reaching depths of 30 meters where it entered the lowlands near the town of Electron. It buried old-growth forests and covered the valley floor with debris six meters thick. The electron event haunts modern emergency planners because it demonstrates that lahars can occur spontaneously, triggered by nothing more than the gradual weakening of rock and the relentless pull of gravity. There were no ash clouds, no lava fountains, no conventional warnings. The mountain simply let go. And the signs were already spreading. Climate change appears to be accelerating the instability, though the precise causal relationships remain an area of active research. Since 1896, Mount Rainier's glaciers have lost more than half their total mass. Three glaciers have disappeared entirely. The summit itself has likely declined by more than 6 meters due to snow and ice melt, according to recent studies, shifting the mountain's highest point approximately 400 feet to the south. As the ice retreats, it exposes rock that has been frozen for centuries. Meltwater penetrates new fractures, potentially lubricating failure surfaces. The hydrothermal system may intensify as less ice remains to buffer the heat. Scientists at the National Park Service describe the glaciers as being at historic lows, with the rate of ice loss accelerating each decade. Based on what we understand about slope stability, the weight holding the weakened western flank in place could be diminishing year by year. In Orting, a town of nearly 9,000 people built directly on the debris field of the electron mudflow, families have learned to live with the sirens. Every first Monday of every month, the Lahar warning system tests its 42 outdoor speakers. The wail echoes off the hills, a reminder that the mountain is watching. Residents who move to Orting for the affordable housing and the stunning views often discover the Lahar zone designation only after settling in. Children practice walking to high ground twice a year, covering two miles on foot, because emergency planners know the roads will likely become impassable within minutes. Families throughout the valley describe keeping bags packed by the door ready at all times. Shoes, water, medicine, documents. Some sleep with windows cracked so they can hear the sirens. Based on community preparedness surveys and local emergency management reports, this vigilance appears widespread among long-term residents who understand what the flat valley floor beneath their homes actually represents. Elementary schools in Orting sit squarely in the projected inundation zone. If a large lahar originates from the Sunset Amphitheater, mathematical models indicate it could reach the town in as little as 40 to 50 minutes, depending on the flow's mobility and volume. Some scenarios suggest even shorter windows. The weight of that knowledge shapes everything. The evacuation plans designed for the Puyallup Valley assume residents will receive warning and respond instantly. But the scenarios that keep emergency managers awake involve what they call a no-notice lahar, a collapse that occurs without precursory volcanic activity, detected only when acoustic monitors sense the flow already in motion. In such a scenario, communities closest to the mountain may have as little as 15 minutes. 
roads will clog within the first five, bridges crossing the Puyallup and Carbon Rivers will become choke points, then death traps. Pierce County has invested millions in evacuation bridges and pedestrian routes, but simulations show that even with perfect compliance, some residents simply cannot reach high ground in time. The warning system is robust, but it is not omniscient. During the July 2025 earthquake swarm, hundreds of small tremors rattled the summit over several days. Monitoring equipment captured every event, yet scientists acknowledged they could not predict whether the swarm would escalate or subside. Based on historical patterns, such swarms typically occur one to two times per year at Mount Rainier, and most resolve without incident. However, the technology detects movement that has already begun. It cannot see the future. Infrastructure failures cascade quickly. Power substations in the Lahar zone serve hospitals and emergency shelters. Water pumping stations sit along river corridors that would be inundated first. The port of Tacoma, one of the largest container ports on the west coast, lies within the extended hazard zone for post-Lahar flooding and sedimentation. A debris flow that reached Commencement Bay could disrupt shipping for months. Sediment washing downstream could alter river channels, destroy salmon habitat, and contaminate water supplies for years. The Washington State Department of Natural Resources has estimated that a major lahar could cause $40 billion in damage, not including loss of life. The domino effect would extend far beyond the mountain's shadow. What the USGS knows with certainty is sobering. Mount Rainier is classified as one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world because of its combination of factors – extreme height, extensive glaciation, active hydrothermal alteration, and proximity to densely populated valleys. The agency lists it among the highest threat volcanoes in the United States, alongside Kilauea and Mount St. Helens. Large lahars have reached the Puget Sound lowland at least 11 times in the past 6,000 years, an average of roughly one every 500 years. The most recent, the electron mud flow, occurred approximately five centuries ago. Statistically, researchers estimate there is roughly a 1 in 10 chance of a lahar reaching the lowland during an average human lifespan. But probabilities offer cold comfort to the 80,000 people living directly within the hazard zones. What remains unknown is equally troubling. Scientists cannot predict when the next collapse will occur. They cannot guarantee that precursory signals will provide adequate warning. They do not know whether the current unrest will dissipate or escalate into catastrophe. The mountain keeps its own counsel. The Lahar detection system is more advanced than any that existed in 1985, when Nevado del Rune is in Colombia erupted and sent mudflows racing down river valleys to bury the town of Armero. More than 23,000 people died that night, many of them waiting for evacuation orders that came too late. The tragedy transformed volcanology and led directly to the warning systems now protecting communities around Mount Rainier. Yet the fundamental vulnerability remains unchanged. When the mountain moves, time becomes the only currency that matters, and it spends faster than anyone can earn. Scientists around the world are now watching the data streams from the Cascades Volcano Observatory with growing concern. Every tremor, every thermal anomaly, every centimeter of ground deformation is logged, analyzed, and debated. The patterns suggest the volcano is restless, but restlessness does not always lead to catastrophe. Mount Rainier has experienced similar episodes before and returned to quiet. The question that haunts every monitoring session is deceptively simple. Is this the precursor to the next electron, the next Osceola, the next event that rewrites the map of Puget Sound, or is it merely the mountain shifting in its sleep, as it has countless times over the past 500 years? No one can answer with certainty. The sirens have fallen silent for now. The acoustic monitors show only the ordinary pulse of glacial melt and seasonal debris flows. Families in Ording and Pialup and Sumner have returned to their routines, trusting in the systems designed to protect them, trusting that the warning will come in time. The weakened rock of the Sunset Amphitheater still hangs above the valley, saturated with water, softened by acid, held in place by friction. Scientists believe this friction diminishes as glaciers shrink and seasonal conditions change. The glaciers continue to recede, the hydrothermal system continues to corrode, 
the weight of the mountain continues to press down on foundations that, according to geological assessments, grow weaker over extended timescales. If the largest collapse-prone section of Mount Rainier's western flank fails during the night, how many of the 80,000 people sleeping in its shadow will reach high ground before the concrete river arrives?